How to begin an oil painting. As we discussed before, there are a number of different ways to begin an oil painting. In an accompaniment to the imprimatura layer, or stain layer, the grisaille is a very traditional layer used by all levels of artists from beginning to advanced. The grisaille is a monochromatic underpainting layer derived from the French for gray, used traditionally as a translation from drawing to painting. Monochromatic just simply means mono one, chroma, color. Like the imprimatura layer before, the grisaille has many traditional benefits. But first, let's go through our materials again. <laughs> we'll need one darker value color and one white. Also, we need an assortment of brushes. We'll need an artist oil, like a linseed or a walnut oil, to help extend the oil color and to create more fluidity and ease with the application of our paints. An odorless mineral spirit solvent to help dilute and clean our oil paint and brushes. And finally, a cotton rag. <laughs> Michael, let's make it classy. All right, that's better. Back to the brushes. For this layer, I've added a few smaller detail brushes, in addition to the medium and larger brushes we already have. The smaller brushes will allow me to help create those final details and edges. Again, larger brushes provide a needed variety of mark making, but they are most beneficial to help create the initial sculpting and blocking into forms. <laughs> Thanks, Scully. I almost did forget the palette knife. And finally, we'll need a palette knife to mix larger amounts of consistent paint Later, during the demonstration, we'll discuss more of the benefits and reasonings behind the grisaille layer. Now let's go mix our palette. For this grisaille, I'll be using a titanium white and a Mars black to aid our effectiveness and application of the values. Let's pre-mix our white and black together to create a range of even values to complete a transition from our black to white paint. The number of values of light and dark grays in your transition from white to black is again up to you. I'll be mixing seven even transitions, but really five is fine or three is fine, but I wouldn't make 45. That would just take too long and honestly a waste of paint. The thing is we don't know how many appropriate values we need and how much of each one we might use in the painting. Value scales can be helpful to visualize an even transition from your light to your dark. Having pre-mixed values allows us to be more consistent with our application of those said values. It allows us to be more efficient in seeing the correct shades of light and dark in our rendering. And it eliminates the constant guesswork of mixing each value on the fly. All right, let's hop over to the painting. For this demonstration, we'll be continuing on top of our imprimatura layer from our last demonstration. When working on top of another dry layer, in this case, our stain layer, make sure it's dry at least to the touch. We will begin by applying our artist oil to activate the dry surface to increase the fluidity and adhesion of our next layer. Apply a small amount of your artist oil to the surface with a larger, preferably one inch brush to avoid scrubbing the surface. Once lightly applied over the whole surface, gently wipe down with a cotton rag or shop towel. In all honesty, you just want a hint of the oil remaining to activate the surface because you don't want drips or runs through your next layer. And not to worry, a hint of the previous layer will lift up. This is totally normal and fine. When starting this layer, I usually begin with my medium sized brushes so that I can ensure that I'll work from larger shapes first, then to my smaller shapes, then to my details, just as we did before. Depending on the piece, I typically start in the background and especially I like to start with my darks. But when we're working from previous drawing and in this case, a stain layer, it's not necessary because we already have a reference for our values from our lights to our darks. From there, I go to my midtones and I render toward my lights and my darks at the same time in a series of contouring, like a topographical map. Thus, I can clearly see and assess the values together, maintaining my transitions from light to dark and not over blending them. Accurately seeing and applying your values takes time and practice, but most of all, it takes awareness. So make sure you're constantly reassessing your lightest light and your darkest dark within your composition. Having these two extremes present within your painting or drawing at all times will help your mind contextualize all of the values of your midtones and allow you to see them much easier. And remember, don't render one thing at a time. Bring the whole image up at once and work from your larger forms to your smaller shapes and smaller shapes and the details will just emerge. 
Don't be afraid to use any color you want for your monochromatic Versailles, but be mindful of a complete and successful value range of light to darks. You will need to select a color with a local value of at least a mid-tone darker deeper. Using anything lighter will severely limit your ability to create darker values, and with it, a successful range of light and dark. Traditionally, the Grisaille color was a neutral earth, or a cooler black. The Flemish method of painting included a Grisaille layer with a cooler and more bluish green black. This cooler layer was referred to as either the dead layer or the moonlight layer. It was used as a preparatory foundational layer for the warmer additional final layers that flew on top of it. Those warmer additional layers were either painted on top of it opaquely or through a series of transparent glazes over time. Alternating temperatures per layer helped build an internal glow within the painting. It also added to the voluptuous and voluminous forms that they were creating. But that again sneaks us into another video discussing the Flemish method of painting. But let's take a moment to unpack what I just said there. A cooler color is a color that has a naturally cooler temperature, like a blue, which represents water, ice, air, etc. Meanwhile, a warmer color is the opposite color that represents the idea of warmer tones, of fire, heat, etc., like oranges, reds, and yellows. But it's all still very relative. Colors constantly shift in temperature, depending on the context of what surrounds them. It's literally the living document of the visual arts world. Thus, the Grisaille layer, in addition to a sense of opacity, value, and the refinement of the drawing, also is supposed to give the artist a sense of temperature, color, and contrast. Traditionally, the Grisaille is applied just like the stain layer, very thinly, following the approach of fat over lean or thick over thin to avoid cracking. In art academic training, both traditionally and modern day, the Grisaille is used as the initial studies of oil, as it is a natural and effective transition from charcoal drawing, having students focus on value, proportion, and mark making. But how much of the previous stain layer should you leave through? Really, it comes down to personal preferences, such as warmer tones in your stain layer or cool temperatures of the Grisaille can be very visually exciting, strategic, and purposeful. But to really solidify that answer, it goes again to the purpose and your expectation of what you're doing with these layers. As we casually mentioned earlier, the Grisaille was used to help capture values, opacities, and cooler temperatures for the final warmer layers, whether they were applied opaquely or through transparent glazes. Working in layers helps the artist not to tackle every aspect of the creation of an oil painting at once. The stain layer allows for the gesture, composition, and initial values, while the Grisaille layer solidifies the rendering of the drawing in proportion, form, values, and depth. It can also set a foundation of color and temperature, alternating from the warm earth underpainting of the stain layer to the cooler gray tone of the dead layer. So that in your final and following layers, the artist can then just focus on color temperatures, finalizing values, highlights, etc. And in our more modern era of art, the Grisaille can be used to apply conceptual meaning to the works and achieve certain moods and compositional pacings. For instance, the more you limit color in a work, the slower the composition can move because you don't have a point of contrast of temperature. Thus, you can create a little bit more of an infinite quiet moment that holds your viewer a tad bit longer. But please don't burden yourself with the quote-unquote right ways of painting. These techniques are just tools, and tools are there to help you create whatever you want. So explore, have fun, and play. Over time, you will create your own process that works for you. Lastly, until you create your own process, it is really helpful to borrow from proven techniques from the past and other artists. So go ahead, steal, borrow, or shimmy your way to success. Again, grisailles are traditionally applied very thinly, but this is my finished final layer for this one sitting, two hour painted study for which I will not be applying another final layer to it. I decided to be a little bit more impasto and sculptural with my final layers of paint. I know, I know, I know. I just told you to keep it thin, but I like thicker paint. So this one might crack, so be it. A very wise artist once told me the last mark you make is the first mark people see. 
Obviously, that's not true at all. But what it does is it forces the artist to slow down as you approach the completion of your painting or artwork. Being thoughtful and deliberate with your final marks. Good indication creates interest, depth, and a clear progression of how your viewer will read through your artwork, forcing a visual investigation and a discovery of the image. Remember, a painting is not a sprint. It's a painting. So for God's sakes, slow down. You don't need to go so fast. Enjoy the process. Take your time and give yourself the necessary pause to allow yourself and your instincts to tell you when the piece is done. By the way, that is super tough to do, and it's darn near impossible if you go too fast, so slow down. And remember, even a bad day painting is still a good day. Thanks for watching, everyone. <coughs> Hello? Wait, hold on, pardon me, pardon me, please, I must interject. Greetings, Michael. Classic refinements aren't just a suggestion, they are the rule. Now while your artwork dances around the traditions, it reeks of that sour modernity you speak of. Painting so thickly will guarantee that your oil paint will not last the test of time. Do you not want the ideal for you and the people who enjoy your videos? You don't get to create perfection in the ideal! Preposterous! Scully, this is simply no mere color scheme. This is meant to emphasize a rhetorical point about how good... Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. This is kind of awesome. I take back what I said. A little bit of modernity might be a good thing. <laughs> However, Michael, the paint you applied is still way too thick and it's verging on the obscene and the vulgar. You don't want to get kicked out of the academy, do you? And deemed not perfect? Perfect like Asia's heat of the moment.